Great. Thank you so much, Jennifer. Uh, what a privilege it is to be with you today, and I, I want to thank all of you for joining us. It uh, looks like we've got a good turnout of folks, and also I do want to thank the uh, the LPELC group as we're partnering on this, because again, I think it's just a great opportunity that we can come together and, and, and work together on this, this uh, uh, interesting topic uh, that, that we bring before us. When we talk about this uh, PER and polyfluoroalkali substances, or PFOS, uh, we need to understand that this is a, a, a human, a group of human-made chemicals, uh, nearly 5,000 different compounds, and it's been manufactured and used around the world, including the United States, since the 1940s. But we may say, well, why is it just now becoming an issue? Well, let me just talk a little bit about that before we get into our presentation. You know, you know the, these chemicals seem to be very persistent. In, in the environment and also, I guess I would say, in the human body, meaning that they don't break down, very quickly that is, and they accumulate over time. Now, PFOS can be found in, in various things. It can be found in your food, uh, you know, those things that have been packaged with PFOS containing materials, or, or maybe they were grown in PFOS uh, contaminated soil, or maybe had some PFOS in the water that was used to irrigate or, or used to, to produce the plants. Uh, it can be found uh, in your, your household products, stain, water repellent fabrics. Uh, it can be found in your drinking water. Uh, it can be found in living organisms. I'm talking about plants, fish, animals, humans. And also, it's found in our soil. So, so PFOS is everywhere. You know, I've recently been involved with two dairies that have been impacted by PFOS, one in the northeast and another in the, in the southwest. So this is definitely an issue that, that can impact the work of the NRCS. It can also impact extension in the types of questions they receive and the research they do. Actually, PFOS impacts all of us. And today, we're very fortunate to have with us two speakers that are experts in the field and the area of PFOS. First, we have Dr. Ava Steinley darling and she is the Vice President and Principal Technologist with Corallo Engineers. Uh, she has a BSE uh, in Chemical Engineering from Princeton and a Master's and PhD in Environmental Engineering from Stanford. Her work focuses on water reuse and PFOS mitigation, including research, planning, feasibility studies, and design of, uh, for, for potable water reuse and PFOS treatment systems. Our second speaker is Dr. Julia Darcy, and she is a research scientist and laboratory lead at Axe Nano. Uh, she received her PhD in chemistry from Yale University. At Ex Nano, Julia performs primary research on innovative technologies to address environmental issues, including PFOS contamination. Ex Nano performs early stage technology development in the environmental space and has received funding from Superfund, from National Science Foundation, and NIST. Uh, she, the, they also have proposals under review from EPA and from the Department of Defense. It's very interesting. Uh, I've had an opportunity to, to get to meet uh, uh, Dr. Darcy. Uh, as I actually found out that their office is located right next door to ours uh, here at the East National Technology Support Center. Uh, also, uh, with, with Dr. Ava, I, I had the opportunity to hear one of her presentations uh, dealing with the PFOS issue earlier this year, and I just know that the two of these uh, individuals are experts in this area and I'm really looking forward to the presentation they have for us today. So with with that, I'll give control uh, to Dr. Julia.